This episode of Winchester and Drury's Natural Barn is brought to you by Mossio Camo. The innate nature of man is to hunt for survival. In an ever-changing society, modern hunters still bear those natural-born instincts. To act on those instincts, every hunter faces a different set of circumstances. For the weekend warrior, it's about finding new dirt. For the gamekeeper, it's about the well-being of the wildlife. For the ultimate land manager, it's about cultivating and maintaining the natural habitat. And for the apprentice, it's about gaining the knowledge to satisfy the natural-born instinct to hunt. Drury's Natural Born. The Long Way Back. The thrill of a successful turkey hunt is engrossing. Yeah! Locating a gobbler and then calling him in gets the blood boiling and in the moment of truth, the natural born instinct to hunt is fulfilled. This is what we love to get out here and do and uh, I'm fortunate to be able to do this because back in October, I fell hanging a tree stand and uh, I'm nowhere near 100% now by no means, but at least I'm good enough where I can get out here and do this kind of stuff. It's been tough getting around, but we're still out here grinding, so that makes it all worth it. Now it's turkey season in the bluegrass state for Drury Outdoors veteran Louis Payne. He's fully equipped and up for the task. Well, here it is, April the 23rd. We're going after them this morning, and it's a very cool morning, 36 degrees right now. So we're going back down here to our lease here in LaRue County, here in Central Kentucky. And uh, we're gonna take the bow and the shotgun in there. Hopefully something's gonna wanna come in and fight and give us a shot opportunity this morning. got it done. I tried to shoot him with a bow. I don't know what happened. Got tore up and missed him, I guess. Grabbed the shotgun. We got her done this morning. Got a bird on the ground. These joggers gobbled their heads off. Finally got them in here and we got a bird down. Man, it couldn't be a more perfect morning here in Kentucky. Mid 30s this morning, calm, and the turkeys just absolutely gobbled their heads off. I got a turkey right over here on the ground, and it couldn't get any better right now. The old Winchester Longbeard XR is smoking. Well, here it is, spring turkey season in Kentucky. This is my first spring Longbeard for the season, 
and it was a perfect morning this morning. They, these birds flew down in the field over next to us. We couldn't see them, but they gobbled all morning, and uh, they finally did work their way in there. And when they seen Rocky, they come in there, jumped on Rocky. I shot at him with a bow and missed. They run out a little ways, and I was able to grab the shotgun. It was loaded down with a Winchester XR Longbeard, and it just smoked his hind end. I'm just so fortunate to have so many friends and family praying, and my wife and I had a pretty rough time these last few months. It's kind of turned the world upside down, but here I am out here doing what we love again. So I couldn't be any more blessed and fortunate to be set behind this nice long beard this morning. Winchester, field tips with the American legend. Hi, I'm Mike Stock with Winchester Ammunition, and on this week's Field Tip with the American Legend, we'll talk a lot about bullet weight. Now, whitetails are a pretty big critter out there, and you know, a big whitetail may go 200, 250 pounds, and as a rifle shooter, you're going after them with a bullet that may only weigh 95 or 100 grains. That's pretty small, so you need to pay a lot of attention to, to how that bullet is constructed and what it weighs. Now, at Winchester Ammunition, we try and make this selection process easy, and on every rifle box of ammunition, we're gonna recommend critters that you should be chasing with that product. For more info, check us out at winchester.com. A quiet opening day. After a disappointing rut, Drury Outdoors veteran Dave Reisner remains optimistic. He's been hunting a mature buck named Flasher, and with the arrival of gun season, the odds are in his favor. Well, we're just getting down to the farm. They're expecting an inch or two of snow tomorrow, so I would think tonight the deer are gonna be moving. They always sense that stuff before we do. I really think uh, a deer that I call Flasher, I have to think he's gonna hit my food plot. Yeah, as quiet as possible. I figure if I don't spook the turkeys, probably not gonna spook them here. I spooked the turkeys, I was unsuccessful. But they were right out in front of here. It's just a quiet opening day. Usually opening day is like, you know, religion in Iowa. I mean, everybody goes to it. It's, it's tradition, but uh, I'm just not hearing the shots, which, I, I mean, I've never, this is as confident as I can be on a big deer. He's a five and a half year old. I call him Flasher because he just kind of shows everything. And Flasher and I have, have a little date here, one of these days anyway, hopefully it's tonight. It's one bad thing when you add heat. Condensates the windows. still legal shooting light when they first came in but just the footage is dark and it's far so I'm elected not to shoot him tomorrow's supposed to snow and then it's supposed to get bitter cold I would think between tomorrow and Monday he's gonna make a mistake earlier in the evening my wife likes to call him lucky because he's always lucky that he gets to survive. Dave here has one deer that he's hunting, and it's not because he's passing on all these other great bucks, it's because his farm, like many, has been hit with the EHD, etc., and he has one target to chase. Between both David and Amy, they've got some incredible encounters in long history with this particular buck. He had encounters, but he couldn't quite get it done, but that's not stopping him. He's still out there, he's still grinding out, he's still putting himself in a situation to where he's in the right place at the right time to finally make it happen. Well, Dave's a veteran hunter. He knows that the only chance he might have to kill the one big buck on his property is a cold front on standing beans. Flying solo. I'm flying it solo tonight, so I'm by myself. We'll see how that turns out. It's 307. We have one little buck back. But deer moving, 307. Hopefully uh, there's more to come where that came from. Windows are starting to fog up. I got some hot chocolate. I'm not a coffee drinker. I think the wind chills are like something five to 10 below. Um, it's cold. Even in this blind, there's still snow on the ground of this. We 
get a really good buck. Uh, I call him Pretty Boy, three and a half year old. The only puzzling thing is, Flasher was with them two days ago on Saturday night, and now he's out here by himself. So that's a good deer, but he's only three. I don't know what did that. I don't know if a coyote, fox, something just spooked my whole field. It wasn't me. And uh, they just, everything just basically cleared. This is not good. This segment of DOD TV's Natural Barn is brought to you by Analogics. Protect your herd with the power of science. It's coming down to the wire in Dave Reisner's quest to harvest the buck named Flasher. And the conditions were right for this to be the final chapter. But after the deer spook, he's not so sure this is the night. Everything just basically cleared. This is not good. Flasher right out here. I, I didn't see him out of the field. I was looking at all the deer that left. But he is right out here. Right there in front of me. Together. I'm filming all this myself. It's a west wind, which just post sunset. So west is blowing right this way. I'm in a blind, I've got ozonics, and that's when they work the best. And I have a lot of deer out here, but that's the only one on my whole farm that I know that I want. He's five and a half, lots of pictures from three, four. I wasn't gonna pass him. <laughs> it's my first buck of the year. Oh. All right, Switesy. Let's go get him. Right, here he is. There is my big boy. Yeah, that, that'll do. Well, here he is. We finally get Flasher. You know, we saw this buck grow up from three and a half, four and a half, and this year he's five and a half. I don't really think he gained a lot. We didn't have a great growing season here in Iowa with the late spring and all. He is an impressive animal nonetheless. Last year, my wife had a great encounter with him with her bow in a hand. She was so caught up in the moment, she forgot to draw her bow. What a magical night. I knew it was gonna be good because the conditions were perfect, but the wind wasn't. That timber that they come out of is due east to me and we had a straight west wind. I thought as soon as I opened that window, there was a chance that they could bust because it has happened before, but I put the Ozonics in there this year. It must have made the difference because not a, a deer lifted its head. Lady Luck played it out my way and I'm sitting here behind him and I couldn't be happier. What a great buck, one of my best ever. And just knowing him so well, when, when you kind of grow him, uh, they mean a lot more to you and this one means an awful lot. The Learning Curve. Natural Born cast member Greg Glessinger is the apprentice, and with each hunt, he is gaining more knowledge. And the best classroom is Iowa in early November. Down in Iowa, we got a northwest wind. It's about 48, 49 degrees. But uh, actually, we're hunting a brand new plot right here, um, Tierman Hammer, and so hopefully we'll have some good luck.
check out our all-new DOD TV. Information, past hunts, and more at your fingertips. The Magic Ticket. Well, it's the morning of November the night. We've got a northwest wind. We're going into the same spot we were two days ago. Had incredible movement, just didn't get the opportunity. So to change it up a little bit, we're gonna take the boss buck in. Hopefully that's gonna be the magic ticket to bring him in close. So we're gonna uh, put our chips on the table and bet on this same, same location, see what's gonna happen. First part of November is a perfect time to drag out a Flambeau boss buck. The big bucks are coming in, they're going to want to fight off other deer for a particular doe that might be in, and uh, a lot of times those, those boss buck decoys are going to lure a, a big mature buck right in. Tell you what, if there's a bigger fan for the boss buck, I'd sure like to meet him because I'm probably the poster child. He just came to the boss buck on a string. Come late October, the first couple weeks of November, if that thing's not in the back of your truck and you're not thinking about every single day to use him, I think you're missing a huge opportunity. We just nailed a 10. It is 25 to 7. Me and Eric were talking, and boom, Eric says, three year old, three year old, three year old. Five minutes later, we got a 10 point at 15, 20 yards. Smacked him. Unbelievable. We smoked him. He's done. We got ourselves a solid Iowa giant on the ground. He is pouring. Yes! The Midwest is full of trees and people for the most part like to tree stand hunt. Reason being is you get out of the deer's sight line. With that said, when you turn to a blind, a whole new set of problems come into play. You know, your scent's lower to the ground, you're right in the deer's field of vision, so you got to be really careful about your movements. It just adds a degree of difficulty or a couple, three degrees of difficulty, really. But when you have the boss buck, it takes all the visual off of you and onto the decoy. Kudos to Greg Mann for pulling this off. Eye level to eye level with a big old mature buck, it doesn't get any better than that. Yes! Woohoo! Well, here it is, November the 9th. And to say that the 9th is a lucky number of mine is an understatement. We came in here two days ago, hunted this plot for the very first time, had buck activity everywhere, gave it a day's rest, so we gotta go back. Came back in with the boss buck, and by 635, we had a three year old taunting the boss buck, and then within three or four minutes later, this guy shows up. 10 minutes later, we got a 12 ring, PSC hammers them down, and here we are in front of a beautiful 
I will whitetail. Next week on Winchester and Drury's Natural Born. We're out here with prairie land outfitters and we turn around and over the fucking Tom is this big old Kansas Longbeard. Got Andrew Dan in the back seat. He's our shooter tonight, opening day of youth season. Got it. I finally got a big buck on the ground here in Wisconsin. Great morning to be in the woods.